Hiya fam, welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. We're back with another reaction. It's another pitch meeting in the MCU. Which one is it now, Dan? We're off to uh, Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Yay! Nothing says awesome movie quite like that, I bet. But they found something wrong, so let's go see what it is. Cheers to you fam, enjoy. So, you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. It's a sequel to a super popular movie, and it's gonna have blue people underwater. But Avatar 2? Marvel doesn't make those, <laughs> you silly goose. No, actually, I'm talking about Black Panther 2. Oh, okay, yeah, no, that series is in our repertoire. That's not how that's pronounced. So anyway, obviously, we're gonna start the movie with a nice tribute to Chadwick Boseman, you know? The Marvel logo is just gonna be him. Of course. And in the movie, T'Challa's gonna pass away from an illness, and Shuri's gonna be trying to save him by making that heart-shaped herb synthetically, but she's not gonna manage. Wow. Yeah, so throughout the movie, Shuri and the Wakandans are kind of dealing with the passing of T'Challa while also dealing with this new threat that emerges. Oh, what's the threat? Oh, it's freaking Namor. 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 Namore. How do you pronounce that? <laughs> Namor. Everybody in the movie's gonna say it differently. I guess there's no wrong way to say it. No, oh, I'm gonna pronounce it Namor. Okay, no, uh, maybe no. there is a wrong way. Like a hungry little kid asking for seconds of his favorite dessert. Namor. Is that cool? Yeah, no, that's no. absolutely not cool. Well, okay then. So why does this guy want to fight Wakanda? Well, it's a long story, but see, this guy's the leader of a secret underwater nation called Talokan, and they also have vibranium, right? Now, that's the stuff that makes all the cool things do all the cool things. Yeah, and since Wakanda told the whole world about vibranium, the CIA started looking for some with a vibranium-detecting machine. What does that machine do? It detects vibranium. That's probably <laughs> why they called it that. That's absolutely why it's called that, sir. And since the CIA found some vibranium underwater, Namor is like, hey, Wakanda, this is your fault. What the heck. Oh. So he's like, now nah, you gotta go get me the scientist that made the machine. I mean, if the machine was purchased by the CIA, they probably already looked into how to make more. What's the point of getting the scientist, girl? So we right. can introduce Riri Williams to the MCU before her show premieres on Disney+. Plus. Oh, okay, yeah, that is urgent. Get her in here real quick. <laughs> so Namor just kind of shows up in Wakanda and says all this to Shuri and the Queen. Do they not have security for the waterways headed into Wakanda? I mean, they must, but Namor's so good, he bypasses them. How does he manage that? With his, you know, water skills? I guess it's off screen, so he just comes and goes as he pleases. Nobody uh, knows. Coming and going as he pleases, Ty. Sure, sure. So now Shuri and Okoye have to <laughs> go get Riri, or <laughs> Wakanda's gonna be attacked. I don't they send more backup with them. Unclear, but so then Shuri and Riri get taken to Talokan underwater. Uh oh, tough to breathe underwater. Yeah, and so Namor shows Shuri how beautiful his nation is and tells her his origin story and why he hates everybody. Understandable. I didn't even tell you why he hates everybody. <laughs> I know. I just... <laughs> I get it. Okay, that's alarming. <laughs> wow. So anyway, he's like, hey, we should team up and burn the world down. And if you refuse, I'm going to destroy Wakanda first. They're going to wage war with the entire planet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do they plan on taking on landlocked countries with beluga whales and hot air balloons? <laughs> well, I wouldn't laugh, sir. You know what they say about beluga whales? You never know when they're going to strike. That's not true. It might be. So anyway, eventually, <laughs> okay. Wakanda comes and rescues them, and they head back to Wakanda. Nice. But then Neymar and his people are going to attack, and they've got water, they've got fish, they've got real Really good singers that'll make you kill yourself. What? And Namor has tiny <laughs> little wings on his feet. Aww. And then he drowns the queen. Oh my god. Yeah, and then he tells Shuri, all right, I'm gonna give you guys some time to regroup, okay? Does a week sound good? I'm gonna head out for a week or so. Why would he do that? So they have time to prepare for the final battle of the movie. Okay. Yeah. So then Shuri freaking figures out how to synthesize that flower and she becomes the Black Panther. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Wow. And she gives Okoye a weird Power Ranger suit, and they make Riri a suit. Is everybody just kind of getting suits now? That's right, sir. Several people are kind of Iron Man now. Wow, mm -hmm. and how did they get all that done in such a short amount of time? Montage. Yes. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> the big final battle, and they figured out their plan of attack. What's their plan? They're gonna head out to the ocean and fight the ocean guy and his people there. Isn't that the enemy's home turf? Yes. Isn't that where the enemy will have the biggest advantage? Oh, absolutely. That doesn't seem like the best plan. Well, that's the one they're going with. Also, <laughs> okay. they realize if they drop dry Namor, they can weaken him a bit. But what, are they gonna attack him with a blow dryer? No, 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 that'd be ridiculous. <laughs> all right. It's more of like a space heater type thing. Oh, okay. So the Wakandans oh, head right. to the ocean for this fight and, you know, really get their butts kicked. Yeah, because that's where the enemy's at their strongest. For sure, for sure. But Shuri's gonna manage to dry Namor off a little bit and get him on land, so they're gonna fight while he's weakened. Oh, great. But then she gets badly impaled, you know, right through her. Oh, my God. Well, it's gonna be impossible for her to beat this guy with that kind of injury. Actually, it's gonna be super 
super easy. Barely, Barely an inconvenience. inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, because he checked this out. What she does is she's fine immediately. Oh, what? Yeah, all good right away. So what about the severe impaling wound? Hey, shut up. So then she's about to kill this guy, but then she's like, hey, what about an alliance? And he's like, oh, yeah, okay, sure, an alliance. And she trusts the word of this guy who just killed her mom and made that promise under the threat of death. I... Yes. <laughs> well, right. so then we find out that the Black Panther had a kitten and we're done. What? So what do you think? Well, it sounds like a great movie and a nice tribute to Chadwick Boseman. Thank you. Yeah, this is going to fit right in with all the other fantastic movies we'll be releasing in 2022. Oh, yeah. People are going to love them all, sir. Oh, I'll bet. Mm. I'll bet that was exactly how they felt. <laughs> Who wouldn't? Yeah, it was unfortunate that Chadwick Boseman passed on, because I really liked him as an actor, and I hate that he was dealing with, with his colon cancer like he was. Yeah, I mean, he was a popular character. He was. Watching him fade away wasn't fun. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah, probably way less fun for him, obviously, yeah. but still. Cancer sucks. It does. And so did this movie, from what I understand. <laughs> I'm not sure if that was just because there was a lack of Chadwick Boseman, or is it... Or is it going on with the major theme that there's just a shit writing job everywhere you go in the MCU. Well, to be fair, his death probably kind of changed the dynamics of the film because I'm sure they weren't counting on that when they made this in the first place. So you had to alter your script to change the fact that your main character is now dead. I don't think Namor was the best choice for a villain. Granted, he's like one of the older characters in the MCU. He's in comics like going all the way back to like the beginning of Marvel. You know, his whole thing is he's an underwater guy who's almost like Aquaman, but slightly different. Thanks. <laughs> okay, so basically that's what they created here, was a DC version of Aquaman for for Marvel. Right. Okay. And fam, like like so many other of these like, new wave of MCU movies, I hadn't seen this one either. I had seen the previous Black Panther, but not this one. I just wasn't interested. Yeah, I mean, like I said, with Chadwick Boseman being dead, I didn't see the, the appeal in the movie. It makes sense that they went with the sister to take over for... Uh, for him because she, she was the one familiar with the tech. She's the one who's obviously going to be able to meet the potential of what it can do. Yeah, she said she did synthesize the rose. So. Right. There's really nothing there that had my interest when I saw the trailer for it. And it's like, eh. I'm sure for somebody it was fantastic out there, but uh, you didn't even encourage me to watch it later on when it was free on Disney+. Plus. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, I might do it now that I've watched the pitch meeting just to, mm -hmm. see, if, just to see what I see there. But not anytime soon. And once again, we have another example of Disney refusing to kill people. Yeah, God almighty. Lightsabers don't do it. Getting impaled doesn't do it. Nothing does it anymore. You're just fine. Apparently they, you know, the gut is, you know, just go for it. Nobody dies. Except yeah. for Qui-Gon Jinn. I think you're setting the wrong precedent with the messages like that. If somebody's going to try and make a TikTok one day mm -hmm. and just, like, start stabbing each other with swords. And I'm like, you're actually going to die, <laughs> all right? Well, I hope they don't do a Mythbusters of that. Mm. They got money to think about, too, so... Well, good, you know, actually kill some characters off, make it interesting so people want to go watch it. Yeah, people will want to keep rewatching to be like, no, that didn't actually happen. Yeah. Yeah, that happened. Iron Man dying was one of the biggest events in the whole MCU. People talk about it to this day. Yeah, they Nobody's going to talk about the non-death of the Black Panther. Right? It's like, man, Chadwick Boseman actually died. Right. But we can't do this to the sister's character, or to the character? Come on. You could have injured her in different ways besides something that was obviously, like, debilitating and just making her shake it off. Right. But she didn't. She was just okay. Eh, y'all can speculate as to why that is, fam, but, uh, you know, we know why. You don't want to kill off your new wave of heroes. Yeah, to be honest, I'm kind of disappointed because you see a lot of the new wave of heroes and they're, like, young characters. Really young. she's young. They had that America character in, uh... Multiverse of Madness. Peter Parker is still young. Hold on. Yeah, the Hawkeye series, they introduced a new younger person in there who's an archer. I don't think the teenage characters really appeal to people like the adults did. No, they don't. They don't give you somebody to look up to, to try to be like when you grow up. Right. And that's kind of the problem, in my opinion. Plus, you're talking about every single Marvel movie is going to be a world-ending disaster, mm -hmm. and you're going to put this in the hands of children? Yeah, I mean, you can't back that because I think as a culture, really as a whole whole society, we're designed not to think of our kids as responsible individuals. And so to have them go out there and save the world, I think, doesn't really fit well with people. Don't get me wrong. In every war, they've always sent children to war. Mm -hmm. That always happens, but there's always been adults in charge. Right. And that's not the case here anymore. Right, because so. the point is you need somebody there who can supervise the kids, show them how it's done, make sure they're able to go out there and do it and they don't just you know, crack under the pressure. Exactly. You know, there's a storyline for everybody. This isn't one of them. So, but yeah, good point. 
that's a good place to end this, I think, guys. As always, be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bells, check us out on those things up there, and like and subscribe again. But as always, this is Cocktail Flicks. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. And we'll catch you on the flip side. Cheers to you, fam. Cheers to you, Dan. Cheers to you, Joe. Later, guys. Bye.